So this piece has given me some trouble um, because I'm just trying to wrap my head around how I want to fix it. There are lighting elements that need to be corrected just in the lighting realm outside of disproportionate um, anatomy and the general acting and framing. So when you have issues with anatomy, acting and framing, they're different. Like when I say acting, I mean how you've decided to make her behave in the painting. I've talked about how as artists we are inclined to be good at accents and funny jokes and impressions. As artists we're good at that outward expression. Some of us like to dance, some of us like also music. Um, so when I'm talking about like the way you've behaved, like the way you've framed her, she looks like she's She's incredibly proud of her magic, but also there's a sinister quality, kind of like a twisted split in her mind that maybe has led her down a darker path. So it, you've, you've really brought this out, but, and that's with acting. So you've, you've done a good job with the acting, kind of like the, 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 the curtaining of her hair in front of her face, the downturn of her face. This is all like your, your, your top marks, top marks for that and top marks for that, top marks for the twisting, that one arm in front of the other arm. Um, maybe she's doing this kind of thing where her hand is this way. But this is a point of interest and it's all the way down in the bottom of the canvas. I was going to open up Portrait Studio to help figure out the gesture a little bit further. Portrait Studio, if you don't know what it is, it's a reference generation. Uh, software. It helps us build characters and scenes, control the lighting. So I'm just going to help myself here. And oopsie. I'm a little bit out of practice with Porsche Studio. I'm just going to try to create this exact scene. All right. So I want the camera to be low because that's something we always forget to include when it comes to our characters a low camera. And it's so important to remember that part of that staging, remember you have to be movie director, so the camera has to be functional. The camera has to be part of the experience. So this arm is going to move there. And I want that, it's, this, it's both a cat-like crawl forward, so it's her kind of like crawling forward, as well as the camera being low. So I'm going to press on W to get the actual move joint controls and that'll be that tucked. And, and when I press 1 and move my mouse around, I can control the lighting. So I really don't want this excessive lighting. I kind of want it to come in from one angle and that's the stuff behind her. The rest is going to be that secondary light. And then pressing E on the head joint, I'm going to just try to get that same almost flirtatious, angry wife of Mrs. Mr. Rochester, Mrs. Rochester basically in Jane Eyre, locked in the attic. Kind of that lost madness. And then we've got that background color, uh, which we can darken down a little bit. So we've got a basic layout of how everything is looking. I do want to do one more thing, which is just kind of press that, press on the W control, and just move it forward a little more. The lighting in this case is abysmal because we've found so many issues with it so far. Um, we found that it's too bright, it's too giving, it's it's doing too much work and it's not really casting that same magical element of like a dungeon, deep dungeon, um, you know, uh, uh, environment. Oh man, I'm having the worst chest pain. <laughs> Shit. So what I'm going to do is just throw a big black darkened layer right on top of it at like 50% and I'm going to delete away on that layer you know, coronavirus ain't no joke, y'all. If I die, remember me. <laughs> I know you guys would. So I'm going to throw in that, let some of that magic come through, which is creating a really, really cool kind of setup here. And I'm going to just try to incorporate these corrections. I think the forehead is a little bit too high. 
Okay, and then we're gonna erase away at the eyes. We've enhanced her character when we darken her even more. There are other things you can do with the eyes that look magical and otherworldly. Bring in specular lights for that glazed element. A waterline, but have that waterline illuminated. Sometimes a character that has watery eyes, but they're evil, makes them look more evil because it makes them look unstable. The next piece is really, really similar in that all we had to do was just get a darkened layer and just plop a big environmental shadow on top of it. You can go anywhere you want with it as long as you know the dominant light source here is this lotus. So that means that this side of this rock, this, oops, this side of this rock, this side, this side, which is basically a shit ton of form studies and that's all it really is, all get that pale white of that lotus flower where everything else is dark. All right, and it's just a really, really basic washing of one consistent value, and it does so much for the scene. And then just imagine everywhere else, there is a side to each rock, a side to the trees. And if you feel like it's too much shadow in one section, oh, it's too much shadow, it's starting to look a little bit dark, it's supposed to be a magical scene. Well, you need a little bit of darkness to have magic visible. I mean, that's always the, as it goes. There is no light without the darkness. <laughs> and I'm going to get that exact white. No, I'm not going to get a light beige color. I'm going to get this exact white and throw it on the skin. That's how you make things look like they're in the same environment. And if I was a movie director and I had a magical thing and I turned on the light, have you ever tried turning on the light bulb, outdoor light bulb, like let's say some patio lights in the daytime? It just looks stupid. <laughs> but then as soon as it's dark, it's just this thing is beautiful, it's glowing, it's magical. Lighting that you know you have to have, this mysterious, my mystical abstract concept that you have to have in a painting to make things visible or else everything would be black. So you're at, at, at odds. Really, you just had to track down the writing. The writing told you this is a magical lotus flower. Everything else doesn't matter after that. And so you've decided the, the lotus flower is what's going, whatever it is, is going to be the, the ruler of the painting, the god of the painting, and everything else. Yeah, yeah, it, nighttime is a thing. We can darken the, we can wait till it gets a little bit darker to start shooting, right? I mean, they designed a whole horror character about a woman whose hair was right in front of her face. I mean, hair is a really, really powerful, scary thing when you haven't tied it up. So, you know, that crazy lady that climbs out of a TV. Stupidest concept I've ever heard in my life, but it freaked people out for like a good 10 years.